Windows licenses have always been notoriously expensive, but did you know there used to be a few editions of Windows specifically made for regions where users typically have less cash to spend or less high-end hardware available to them? Collectively, they were called Windows Starter Editions and spanned three generations of the operating system, XP, Vista, and 7. Windows XP Starter was released in 2004, around three years after the regular editions of XP came out and was targeted at certain countries in South America, South and Southeast Asia, along with Russia and Turkey. There was great demand for lower cost PCs in these regions, meaning that Microsoft saw an opportunity to provide an operating system for those PCs and get lots of new users on the Microsoft platform. Microsoft was also concerned that Linux, which was freely available, would end up becoming the dominant OS in those parts of the world if they didn't step in with their own solution. Not to mention that they were worried that people would just use pirated operating systems if they didn't make Windows cheap enough. Of course, this stripped down version of XP had serious limitations. It could only run three programs at once, maxed out at a screen resolution of 1024 by 768, and was only licensed for the lowest end hardware. Think processors like the Duron and Celeron, and systems with only 512 megabytes of memory or less. But despite these limitations, or maybe because of them, Windows XP Starter was a hit. Microsoft sold over a million copies of XP Starter and followed up the success with Windows Vista Starter in 2007. But this is where things started to get a little hairy for the software giant. We'll tell you why right after we thank Shopify. If you've been following us, you've probably heard of LTTstore.com. Well, it's made entirely possible thanks to Shopify. Shopify is a powerful commerce platform that empowers you to start, grow, and manage a business. We've been using Shopify since 2019 and have processed hundreds of thousands of orders thanks to their amazing tools. For creators like us, they offer a fantastic feature that integrates our shop across all social platforms like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and more. And it's not just us. Millions of people in over 170 countries are selling online using Shopify, even though, like us, they're Canadian. Plus, their platform is super easy to use thanks to a simple drag and drop store editor, marketing tools, and access to over 8,000 apps in the Shopify app store to customize your store. So go to shopify.com slash techwiki to start your online store today. Do it. At first, it might seem like Vista Starter would be an easy upgrade from XP Starter. It had similar restrictions designed to allow it to work well on lower end hardware, but with the new Vista features and a more generous one gigabyte RAM limit. Microsoft eventually decided to replace Vista Starter with Vista Home Basic, which contrasted with the more mainstream Home Premium Edition. Home Basic had Aero disabled to lighten the processing load on lower end PCs and ended up on computers for sale outside of the emerging markets we previously mentioned, including in the US. Part of the reason for the home basic release was that Vista had already developed a reputation as a frustrating OS to run due to the onerous hardware requirements. And home basic became a way for Microsoft to try and change this perception as well as to sell old stock of underpowered computers originally designed for Windows XP. In fact, it wasn't uncommon to peel off those Windows Vista basic case badges to find a made for Windows XP sticker underneath. Ya basic. But as funny as this was, it did make a bit more sense for Microsoft to have just one lower end version for underpowered hardware, regardless of the geographical location. Despite the fact Vista Starter didn't do so well, Microsoft pressed on with the Starter lineup, releasing Windows 7 starter in 2009. Confusingly though, starter was now the edition designed for the then popular netbooks, small, low power laptops that attracted users that mostly needed a PC for simple internet based tasks. Like the other starter editions, it had a memory limitation, two gigabytes in this case, but unlike those other ones, Windows 7 starter had a foothold in more developed nations due to being designed for netbooks. Instead of getting the new starter, the emerging markets got Windows 7 Home Basic, which now had a larger eight gigabyte memory limit. But this would be the last time that Microsoft produced a stripped down Windows version for certain parts of the world. As even lower end hardware became more powerful, running Windows became easier, especially as Microsoft kept the system requirements of Windows 7, 8, and even 10 fairly similar. How nice of them. But the lack of starter editions following Windows 7 actually contributed to the death of the netbook. 
which is a super interesting topic in its own right. So if you'd like to know more about how the netbook disappeared after having 15 minutes of immense fame in the late 2000s, go watch this video next.